Hi, my name is Dr. Michelle Maidenberg, and I have a wonderful guest with us today. It's Dr. Eve Goldstein. She's one of my closest friends, I have to say, and another friend who moved to California, which I still haven't gotten over. I have to also say that. <laughs> um, so she has incredible tips to share with us today that she implemented with her family. And I'm excited for her to convey them to you because it's something that you could definitely introduce in your own families, which could be extremely helpful. So without further ado, and Eve, if you want to introduce yourself, and I, I can't wait to share your tips. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eve Goldstein, and I am a child and adolescent psychologist. I have practiced back east in New York, in Scarsdale, called Westchester Child Therapy, as well as a practice out here in California called Calabasas Child and Adolescent Psychology. Um, so we've all been trying to figure out ways to be creative during quarantine, keep our spirits up, and have great motivation. And a couple of different tips that I've learned and taken from different spots were um, that have been helpful for our family was we created a big bucket list of all of the things we wanted to do during quarantine. And we check them off and every couple of days we take a look at our list and see which ones we want to tackle this week. And it could be anything from doing puzzles to having yoga in the park, mm -hmm. uh, social distancing picnics with our friends via Zoom. Um, we've had special game nights and uh, really fun experiences. You can just have a meeting with your kids and uh, make the big list, whether it's TikTok night or selfie nights. Uh, there are lots of fun things that, that you can do online. We took virtual tour of museums. We've taken virtual tours of um, some parks and places we'd like to go visit. And now they're on our bucket list for real. So that's been really fun. I just, um, I just have a really quick question. So um, does everyone participate, everyone in your family? Because I know, you know, obviously you have three kids. So do, does everyone participate, number one? And number two, because like you, I have kids of all different ages in my household. Um, and then the second thing, is because we did a survey, we actually did a family survey where we had them fill out questions, you know, and then we culminated all the questions and then had another family meeting to discuss that. So I'm curious, you know, how you disseminate, you know, how you um, uh, coordinated all of that. Like, did you ask each child or did you have a family meeting and then just kind of ask out loud everybody? So we had a family meeting and everybody came together to pull together their ideas. Our oldest daughter ended up creating the big list for us. It's on a huge sheet that we taped up on a door in, in our uh, kitchen. And uh, it's all rainbow and color coordinated. And the kids love checking it off. Typically, uh, most things are done together as a family, but sometimes some of the things have been done individually. Like one of them was having a bike adventure. So my middle and youngest children really enjoy bicycling whereas my oldest is not such a fan so they went off and they had their bicycle adventure okay. and came back and checked that off so it's flexible yeah so my my 20 year old boy definitely is not making the big master list and coloring it i can tell you that much <laughs> <laughs> that's why we had to do it <laughs> uh -huh. So, um, yeah, my color, my, my daughter is a senior in high school, so if uh -huh. that gives perspective in terms of the age. Yeah. Um, the, uh, some of the other things that have been really nice that we've done at home uh, was uh, I, we created a take what you need wall, mm -hmm. and you can also do a give what you can wall. So um, what that looks like is... Um, we put up post-it notes uh -huh. with all different kinds of feelings or um, effort, motivation, silliness, laughter. And if you feel like that's some kind of emotion or some kind of motivation or mm -hmm. quiet or something that you need in that moment, 
you can just take that post-it and it actually really helps to refocus your attention mm. on what that need is. So instead of getting frustrated, maybe it's that you need quiet and you take your little post-it and you spend a little time by yourself. Or maybe light is what you need. You've been sitting in your room and on Zoom in school mm -hmm. and you need to go outside and get a little bit of light. And it just helps to refocus just by looking at that post-it. And then I just, just keep just a stack. A, a quick question about yeah. that. Um, so it sounds like that's more for the individual rather than letting the family know, right? Like. Right now, I need quiet time, you know, Correct. don't mess Correct. with me, you know, but it sounds like more for the individual saying like, wow, I realize like there's an unmet need right now that I, you know, and I, I need to kind of tap into that. Correct. Right? They, and they yeah. can just walk by and pull it off. It's individual. I love that. Love and um, I keep a stack of post-it notes right there that if you have an idea of something that somebody else might need, you can also write it on and stick it back up on the wall. Terrific. That is so amazing. I love that. So that's a, a little fun thing that we have going on in our house also. The other day I walked in and I saw motivation on my daughter's desk. So I also now knew that I needed to check in with her and see if I could help her with that motivation. Um, and the, the other piece that we've been doing at night at dinner time is we have a list of questions that we've put up on a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. The list of questions uh, include, have you gotten outside today? How have you um, let go of expectations of what you thought today would be if mm -hmm. we weren't in our COVID uh, situation? Mm -hmm. um, like my daughter miss prom. And so of oh. course that's, that's a hard thing to let go of, but how has she let go of that? Who are you connecting to? Because during this time, creating those connections is really, really important. Seeing your friends through Zoom, having mm -hmm. walking um, in, in your neighborhood while your friend is walking in their neighborhood and having a little conversation, checking in on your loved ones, connecting with your family and friends. Mm -hmm. So making sure that you're connecting and not isolating is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and also, what have you contributed today? Because so much of what we've been doing is focusing on our uh, basic needs. Mm -hmm. But actually, um, we can rise above that and not just survive, but thrive during this time. And in order to do that, we really need to think outside of just how am I getting dinner done for the family and more about what can I really contribute today? And maybe it was making somebody smile, somebody mm -hmm. laugh. Maybe it's just being there to listen for a friend or creating masks for your local yeah. neighborhood, uh, checking in on your neighbors. There, there are a lot of things that you can do. And also, what, are, what have I been focusing on in terms of my career and my work? And how have I been helping others? I love that. And, I, you know, I also find that, you know, also taking a moment of gratitude, you know, like I was thinking the other day, because, you know, something that's, that's happened during this, which is interesting, is like, you know, I work out in the morning and then, you know, and then I start my sessions, but my husband in the morning brings me, it's like, this has become a tradition, you know, during quarantine, but he's, he brings me coffee and like egg white, it's like an egg white omelet. And, and I have to say, like, it, it's been so like nice because I, I really sit there and every time he brings it to me every morning, I feel this like gush of gratitude, you know, like, when would we ever have time for him to actually do that? You know, right. and it, it, it feels so loving like that. I go off in my day feeling loved, you know, that's fantastic. And yeah. also letting him know that you're feeling that Ex way. Exactly. So it's like, even the moments where we kind of take for granted, you know, you know, cause there's su these subtle changes that we recognize even more cause it's kind of in our face, you know, we right. don't have a choice. So I love, I love all those ideas are so, so incredible. And when we're thinking about going back to normal, 
we really want to actually grow from this experience and not just go back to the way things yeah. were. We want to have the time where your husband can bring you your omelet or you can yeah. check in with yeah. your family or you can have some of these fun experiences together yeah. and how to, how to get back to basics in terms of not having such an overscheduled situation mm -hmm. at home where you're missing out on those real connections that are right in front of you. Yeah. And it's funny because yesterday's talk that I gave just individually, I talked about comparisons and I talked about how, you know, we quantify, like the, saying that this is the new normal means that that was better than this, you know, that yeah. that was better. This is worse. That was good. This was bad. Right. And then we, we bring that into kind of the present moment and we really have to be careful with that. Right, because this is not ideal, but we could also get something like you said, very, very, like powerful and meaningful out of it. You know, right. um, we've actually been having conversations at home about how we would want things to look different, because now we've had that opportunity to sit back and take a deep, deep breath yeah. and look at what what our life is looking like yeah. and how we can really enjoy our time. Mm -hmm. and balance find that balance between family time social time yeah. work time all of the different interests that mm -hmm. everybody has yeah and which is which is usually you know pretty challenging um yes. right always um so thank you so much for sharing all of that. It was a pleasure to speak with you today. And, and I, I hope just, these tips are helpful. And I just got the added pleasure of just seeing you, which was always <laughs> wonderful. I'm doing a little bit, you know, kind of leaning into my social interactions and connections. So I'm excited about that too. <laughs> Fantastic. So well, it was great to see you, Michelle. You too. you too. Thank you so much. Okay.